series. This episode I'll be showing you how to use CSS and style sheets to be able to style your application and make it look good. So before we begin, I expect that you know what CSS is and how to use it. On a, you don't have to know everything about it, but I expect you know how to do the basics. So if you don't know what CSS means, it's just a um, acronym that stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And it's a programming language that allows you to style your web page basically. It's meant for web page design and it's been around for a long time as you can see here the initial release is 1996, 22 years ago which is a long time ago. So if you want to learn how to use CSS you would just go to w3schools.com and this is how I taught myself CSS way back in 8th grade. Um, I taught myself HTML and CSS so you might want to learn both, uh, both so you might want to do that because they're heavily related. They're used in conjunction with each other very often, okay? So we know that we can use it for HTML and web page design also, but we can also use it for JavaFX styling too. So if you know CSS, all you gotta do is create a style sheet within your um, JavaFX application, and then we can link it to different things like the scene, different uh, controls and components, and stuff like that, okay? So we can use CSS and JavaFX, it's really simple. So if we go back to our application here, oh, and by the way, I'll put the link for this in the description below in case you wanna check it out and learn how to do all this. Um, if you're wondering what, how much you need to know, just go from pretty much here all the way down to here. That's what I would recommend. You don't really need to, well, I'll learn some of this too, but you don't need to know all of it, okay? Just, you know, the basic fundamental stuff. Anyway, so we'll go back here to our application and we'll show you how to use CSS, okay? So, First, let's, okay, we're on, yeah, episode seven, that's good, I don't need to change that. But the first way you can use a style sheet is by using it for the whole scene. You can target it to be linked with the scene. So what we can do here is open up our project structure and we can create, or I already have two set up here, so I'll just delete these. You don't need that one, you don't need, you don't need that one, okay? So if you wanna make a new style sheet to style our um, JavaFX application, we could either have it in here inside of the source folder, or you can be more structured and have it inside of a separate you know, package or folder, really the same thing. So we can just call this style sheets. Okay, so we're gonna have a specific folder here just for style sheets, okay? And it's already recognizing that's it's for CSS. You can see here it has a little symbol. I believe that's um, the CSS3 symbol. But anyway, so we can open this up here and we can make a new style sheet by doing this and now we can give it a name okay so this is going to be the style sheet for like i said our whole scene so we could just call it um uh styles okay there we go um so you can call it whatever you want by the way it doesn't actually matter okay so inside of here we can start adding the styles for our application so let's say we want to um target everything right so the most simple thing you can do is basically just target the root node for the applic for the scene so we can go back here and the root node for our scene is just going to be the vbox because we plugged it in right here that's going to be the root node so that would target that so if we do dot root that's going to open that up here inside of here we can add our css properties as you know if you know css don't watch this video if you don't know css it's going to confuse the crap out of you probably so as for the properties that you can use if you type in something like color um you can see that here you can see here that they're not the same um CSS properties in CSS. It's not like regular CSS properties. It's custom JavaFX properties. So just keep in mind that every single property that you're going to use for JavaFX um, CSS, it has to begin with um, dash FX dash and then the name of the property. So for example, if you want to do a background color, we could do, um, well, it's, it's going to, you know, assume it, but we can type background color and we could go down here and then do background color just like that. So as you can see here, the property is dash FX dash background color. So the regular CSS property would just be background color, but it adds that in front because it's for JavaFX. Very, very simple. So now we can choose a color if we want to. Let's open this back up so we can choose it. And there's a bunch of different colors that we can use. You can also use the uh, hexadecimal code or whatever it's called, if you want to. Um, so let's just choose a random color. We'll do fuchsia, whatever the hell that means. Um, so that's gonna use that color for the background color for the root now. And of course the root is gonna represent the whole scene because the the whole scene is basically laid out by the layout manager, the layout control here, the root. So you'll see that in a second. But now, before we actually can run this, let's see what happens if we run it right now. We need to link it to the scene, right? We have our style sheet, but we haven't linked it to anything yet. So it's pretty much empty. We don't even have any controls yet. We need to add controls, by the way, also. So what we need to do here is go back here. Let's add a control first. So we're going to add a label, a simple label. So we could do um, label, make sure it's from JavaFX. So label one is equal to new label, just like that. And now we can give it a name. This is this is a cool label, bro. There we go. So now we have our label here, and so now we can add it to our scene, of course, by or add it to the root actually, because it's going to be a child node of root. So we'll get children dot add. We'll do add all because we're going to have multiple here. Label one, just like that. Okay. 
So we just added it there so we can try running this and see what happens. So here we go, we have our cool little label here. It says this is a cool label bro. Indeed. So now we can add the style sheet to our scene here so we can begin styling it. So to do that, all we have to do is do scene down here, scene dot get style sheets dot and then add. You can add all if you have multiple style sheets, for example, or for some reason, but you can usually have just one really. That's what I would recommend. So we could simply do add and now inside of here we provide the URL or more specifically the path for our style sheet. So since we have it inside of this folder here, we need to make sure we specify that. So we could do something like this. Um, it should work if we do style sheets. But we need to have an, it's a string, of course. So style sheets, and then slash for the folder, right? And then styles.css. That should work. It might not. Let's see what happens, okay? So that's going to basically show the path for the style sheet, and it's going to link it to our scene that we have here, okay? So let's run this and see if that works. And awesome, it works. As you can see here, it says that the, or it shows you that it's pink now because, or purple, I don't know what you'd call that. Probably more purple than pink. But yeah, we have our style sheet here because we chose it to have a fuchsia um, background color, however you say that. And one little cool trick, by the way, if you don't want to, you know, specify something in here by yourself or whatever, you can click this and there's, there's a color picker that you can use here. If you want to do that, you can mess around with it. You can change it to different types, whatever you want to do. Really cool. So you can play around with that. There we go. So now we have that color. And let's run this again. Restart it. Stop and rerun. And boom, now we have this cool color here, right? So let's just customize this a little further. If we want to do some more stuff, we could try color. Um, there should be a color. Yeah, I don't see a color, like a font color one. That's the most interesting thing. Font color, is that one? Font size, font family. I know font family is just for changing the font, so we'll try that one. So font family, and we have a bunch of um, already set up options here. So that's kind of cool, actually. Um, so let's try something crazy, um, or I don't know, just something random. We'll try this one, letter gothic std. Okay. Oh, nothing happened. Um, let's see, why is that? Hmm, very interesting. Let's try something, let's change the cup, the size of it, font size, or size, font size, there we go, so size. Let's try doing 25 pixels, okay. There we go, so that changes. Awesome. So it says this is a cool label, bro, and 25 pixels of size. So let's change this again, see if we can get it to do something that can be noticed. Let's try this one, deja vu. Interesting. Hmm. Not changing. That's weird. Maybe we need to specifically target our, um, what's it called? Our label here. So if you want to target something like a label, um, usually what you want to do in regular CSS is just target, for example, right, if you have a h1 tag, you know, you're going to have multiple h1 tags within your, um, your HTML uh, code, right? So if you want to target every single h1 tag, you could simply do dot h1 usually, right? Or no, you just do h1 normally, right? And target it just like that. But since we're not using HTML, obviously, um, if for some reason we want to target every single label, we could simply do dot label dot label and we could target any other control just like that all you got to do is provide the name we could also do dot hyperlink you know anything like that any label or any control I mean that we're going to be learning in the future can be targeted with CSS and then after that if we want to um, change it maybe or um, yeah like change the uh, the stuff for the label we could do that so so now we can add some properties for our label here so background <laughs> color um, I'm going to show you what happens here it's kind of cool so let's do something random, crimson, that's a cool color. So we'll do crimson, let's run this, see what happens. And as you can see here, it overrided it basically, okay? Because we have the root here, right? And the root is gonna be the basically the, uh, basically everything, right? That's gonna target everything because it's the root, right? But if we target something specific like the label, the label is more important than the root. So it's gonna be, it's gonna take precedence and then the, the color is gonna be different from the root color basically, right? And you'll see that in a second when we actually target um, or make style sheets for specific uh, controls instead of using the whole scene. But you'll see that. So like I said, that's how you target the root, but that's also how you target a specific control. And if you want to target any other control, you do dot and then name the control that you want to target. One more thing I want to show you is how to target a ID. For example, so again, in HTML, you're going to have multiple 
um, elements like h1 for example but let's say you want one of the h1 elements to be different from all the other h1 h1 elements right because right here if we have um, multiple labels they're all gonna have the same styling but let's say we want one of the labels to have something custom than the other labels have okay so we can do that by giving it an ID so let's make another label here we'll just copy and paste this because I'm lazy um, so th we'll name this label 2 new label give us some random text here and we'll add that the label to so now we need to give it an ID okay so it's very similar to HTML so to give it an ID we could do label to dot get ID or no set ID and there we go so we can give it a string name of ID um, so we can let's name it something like special label special dash label usually you want to use dashes when you have multiple words in CSS so now we can do special dash label if we want to target it but now once we're targeting it we can now change the properties as you know right so we could do uh, font size font size um, let's do 40 pixels that's going to be very big probably so let's try that so there we go now we get this is a core structure and it's 40 pixels big and if we expand this we can see the rest of the um, rest of the letters so keep in mind this will only target elements with the ID of special label okay but this one here will target every single label that we have even the one that we have here except that if we have something that overrides this one it's gonna basically take precedence for example what I mean by that if they both have the 40 pixels size here or let's say no this one has 20 pixels but this one has 40 pixels this one is specifically targeting the ID of one label but this one's targeting every single label so this one's a little more important so this is going to take precedence over this font size okay so let's try running this and see what happens so the regular one should be 20 pixels but the new one should stay as 40 pixels and that's exactly what happens right so that hopefully makes sense so yeah just keep in mind there's a little hierarchy in which you know properties take precedence which selectors take precedence okay so anyway that's how you make a scene specific style sheet that's how you set a style sheet for a scene but there's other types of style sheets we can do we can also do a style sheet for a a parent node for example this is a parent node here because it it's able to have children so any node that can have children within it is able to contain a style sheet so so we can give this a style sheet by doing root dot get style sheets so and then dot add so it's the same exact thing except that it's different from the scene it's not a scene it's just it's a node right so we can add another one here we could call this root or no we can call it um, Let's just think of something random. Fire. I don't know. I'm just thinking of something random. So fire.css. Oh, wait. We just made a class by accident. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Make a style sheet. That's what we're trying to do. So a new style sheet. So we'll call it fire. And it's going to be a CSS file. So do fire.css. But of course, it's in a folder, right? So we have to specify the path. So style sheets slash fire.css. There we go. So that should target that. And now we can go in. Make sure you have your semicolon there. But now we can go into here and then target anything that's related to. Um, this you know root thing here that we just added a style sheet for right so for example if we're gonna have a root selector here so dot root what that is gonna do is target everything but more specifically it's gonna target this one here because this is the top level node for this style sheet right and then since it's a parent node it can have children right so if we were to add children to this it actually has two children currently label one and label two so we can target these specifically right so we can do something like special label if we want to or you know dot label it doesn't really matter the possibilities are endless so we can do that right but keep in mind for example if we we're gonna make something else like an image here image view image is equal to new image view just like that um, I don't really care about what's in here just for testing purposes I'm just trying to make a point okay so what I want you to keep in mind here we cannot target the image view node that we just created unless it's added to this root node here right because this style sheet is hooked into this root node so we cannot target a node that's not also inside of this node here okay so we cannot edit this node here with CSS until we add it as a child to this node here okay don't forget that hopefully that made sense so yeah that's all very simple that's how you add a, a style sheet for a parent node um, all you gotta do is do the same thing really but just keep in mind you know what nodes are children so you know what you can select and what you cannot select okay so the final thing I want to show you is the most simple version of styling and it's how you style a single control or component whatever you want to call it so let's go ahead and make one uh, down here let's just make a, a hyperlink um, well okay we'll do it up here actually right here so we're gonna make a hyperlink so hyperlink link 
is equal to new. Wait, did I did I import this from the right place? Yeah, I did. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I did. So hyperlink link is equal to new hyperlink. Blah blah blah. It doesn't matter what the name is. So now we don't want to add this to our scene here. So we'll do a link just like that. I'm just going to add it to there. So let's see if that works. We may have a problem here. It says invalid URL or resource not found. Where is this? Okay, we cannot do that. Let's go. Let's find where this happened. So it's right here on this line. So this doesn't. Oh, I meant to do. Wait. Okay, yeah, we can't do that. Of course, so that's not an image URL. So it should work now. Now that we got rid of that. Okay. There we go. So now we have our link down here. It's a little invisible because of our, our blue background. So we can change this if we want to or just get rid of it. Um, let's just change this to green or something. There we go. Pretty cool. Rerun this. Should look better now. There we go. It looks way better. So now we can see our link clearly, right? So now if you want to change the style link for our control that we just created, all we got to do is do link.setStyle. And now inside of here, we can provide the properties that we want to change for this control. So if you want to change the background color, I always do background color for CSS, you know, like examples because it's the most simple one that I know. Um, so we can do FX and it pretty much auto completes the different properties because IntelliJ is really smart. So you can find all the different things here. So if you want to do background color, I'm going to just type background color, auto complete. And now we have all the different options here. So we can set the background color to light coral, for example, excuse me. Um, Let's see what happens. There we go. So now we, we got our light coral background. Very pretty. But if you want to add another one, for example, all you got to do is have a semicolon and then add something else on the end of that. So we could do, okay, we'll do rotate. That sounds cool. So we do 45. That should rotate at 45 degrees or something like that. Should. Keyword should. There we go. So that's kind of cool, actually. It looks kind of crazy. So as you can see here, we rotated this control. And only this control because that's the only thing we targeted here with the set style method to we changed it to do 45 degrees so that's kind of cool that's awesome so anyway y'all get the point here this is the different ways you can use css styling for java fx it's a very simple concept um you might the only thing you might forget how to do is you know the different properties but again it's just going to auto complete so you won't be able to forget really all you got to do is scroll scroll around and look and stuff like that and keep in mind, they're all pretty much the same as the regular HTML CSS um, properties, except that it has the dash FX dash thing in front of it. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it for CSS styling in Java FX. If you have any questions about what I showed you today, you can ask in the comment section below, or I would prefer that you join our discord server. We have a discord server in the link in the description. So make sure you join that and hang out with us, whatever you want to do, ask questions. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, forgot. Um, all the code for today's episode is going to be in the description below, so make sure you check that out and then bookmark it for future reference in case you forget how to use CSS styling for JavaFX. Okay, so that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like if you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.